Hey everybody, let's get into this before I lose 50% of you. Now, formation flying in VR with VR controllers is really hard. Even with loads of practice and the best equipment, it can still be frustrating and tiresome. Now, I've got a bit of real life experience in this, but I want to say something up front that I think you'll be pleased to hear, depending on how you look at it. And that's that formation flying in a PC game like VTOL VR is way harder than doing it in real life. When doing it for real, your stick centers itself and gives feedback. You can feel the motion when you're moving up, down, left and right or out of your formation position. You get shaken around by the vibration when you're flying in a wingtip vortex or jet wake and you have this range of other sensory information that you can make use of. But in VR, the task is much harder. You're just holding onto a point in thin air with your outstretched hand. You could turn your head slightly and accidentally move the stick to full deflection without even knowing it. Your vestibular system isn't giving you the correct information, you don't feel any forces from the aircraft, just nothing. So here's my top 5 tips for anyone looking to improve their VTOL VR formation flying skills. Now these apply mainly to flying games with VR controllers, but they're also useful if you have a joystick set up and also in other flight sims. The YouTube algorithm is going to hate me for this, but I'll start with my number one tip. But first let me ask you one question. How do you know when you're in the correct formation position? It's just the vibe of the thing. Fair enough, but here is my number one tip. Have something to aim for. So pick some features on the lead aircraft which will give you a position in 3D space. To start with, I'll just create a line with two point features. So for example, here I'm using lead's nose and their wingtip. When those two overlap, I know I'm on the right line. There we go, so that's one part. This line will give us an aim point for up, down and forward back, but not for spacing in and out. To fix our position on this line, we need one more reference point. In this case, I use the line projected by the rear tailplane. This would be my close display formation position. And a couple of meters back would be my more comfortable combat formation position. And there we go, instead of wallowing around in the general vicinity, I've given myself a consistent aim point to strive towards. For line astern here, I aim to keep Leeds tailplane just touching their wings, and for spacing, the wings just about as wide as the HUD brackets. Your aim point features will be different for each aircraft, but pick something which will place you not just behind, but also a bit below lead. And that brings me to my number two tip, which is to stay below lead wherever possible. Being above lead makes it hard to keep them in view, increases collision risk, it's harder in maintaining position and ultimately sets you up to commit the ultimate no-no of going blind on lead. Keeping lead at least an aircraft width above the horizon during the rejoin will help in judging distance, the option to bug out safely if you overcook it and you'll be able to keep them in sight the whole time until you're stabilised. Once you're stabilised nearby and ready to move in closer you can climb up higher towards the lead aircraft but remain a little below in your close formation position. This becomes particularly important for night formation. Keep lead silhouetted against the sky wherever possible. So my number three tip is to declutter. The aim here is to reduce the presence of unnecessary information in your HUD and your HMCS. Mostly I fly with the visor up to improve brightness and remove the symbology. Then you can either turn the HUD completely off or just turn the brightness down. When you're in close formation, you generally won't have a need for any information overlays. The formation leader should be monitoring navigation, radar, mission parameters, etc. So the other thing you want to declutter is your thoughts. Now, I'm not a religious person. Complete any checklist, cockpit admin, etc. whilst in a loose formation and don't commit to rejoining in close until you're ready. Once you're on the wing, your job is to simply be there and only look inside occasionally to monitor fuel state, cockpit enunciations, etc. Number four is the importance of being relaxed. Make sure your hands and arms are in a stable and resting position when holding onto the game controls. For me, my right wrist is resting on the end of my chair's armrest and only small wrist movements are required to move the right hand stick. If you're holding up your controllers in mid-air with your arms, you'll never have a stable enough hand for good formation flying. Same thing goes for the left hand on the throttle. I'll keep my whole hand resting on the armrest surface and I'll just slide my hand up and down the armrest for large movements. And just squeezing or relaxing the controller grip will move it enough for tiny throttle movements. You can also reduce the joystick sensitivity when you're first starting out to help smooth out those large control inputs. Lastly, if you're finding that it's getting harder and harder to stay in position, just fall back to a looser formation spot and see if your hands and arms are still in a generally relaxed state. Let go of the joystick briefly and see if your hands or arms are getting tired from white knuckling it or holding your hands up in an unnatural position. Once you've reset yourself and loosened up a bit, you'll notice a difference immediately. Alright, and lastly here's some things that the lead pilot can do to make the formation flight more successful. The wingman's job is to remain on your wing as best they can until told to do otherwise, but lead needs to ensure they don't burn out their wingman unnecessarily. 
It goes without saying that you need to fly smoothly, but to help ensure that you do, always have a 10 mile flight path all planned out ahead of you so you can avoid aggressive maneuvers and snap decisions that could eject your wingman from the formation. Next thing Lee needs to do is keep the aircraft at a stable airspeed envelope. Flying too fast or using afterburner removes the margin that your wingmen need to keep up with you and make any adjustments. And then conversely, you also need to avoid flying too slow, where you enter the airspeed instability envelope. Now I'm about to bring up a graph here and my audience retention is going to plummet, but hang in there, okay? Whenever you fly at or below your minimum drag speed on the back end of the drag curve, you'll make it difficult for you and your wingman. If, if you're at a slow airspeed and keep a constant throttle setting whilst holding your altitude, then your aircraft will always either speed up or slow down. You'll never be stable. As you can see here, a tiny drop in airspeed will cause an increase in drag, which will cause a drop in airspeed, which will cause more drag and so on and so on until you stall. And then the opposite occurs for initial small increase in airspeed you'll slowly accelerate up to your min drag speed. Now this doesn't occur on the front end of the drag curve where there is speed stability. Here a small disturbance that increases airspeed will increase drag which will reduce you back to your original airspeed and vice versa down here. So staying above your min drag speed will help your wingman need far less throttle movements. Where possible, make use of the autopilot with the exception of heading select and speed hold in most cases. The autopilot is quite jerky in heading select mode, so I'd recommend using altitude hold and slowly adjusting aircraft roll with the stick by itself. The auto throttle in speed mode will cause fluctuations in throttle settings during turns etc, which will fatigue your wingman even faster. It'll also go full mill power if it needs to, making it harder for everyone to keep up without going on and off their afterburners. So avoid using auto throttle in most cases when leading a formation, just set 80 or 90% throttle manually and let go of the throttle, your wingman will thank you for it. So last tip I've got here is if you want to transmit on the radio without bumping the controls when you grab hold of them, use the hand mic like I'm doing here. You can just reach up to your mouth with either hand, pull the trigger and talk into the hand microphone. So that's my top five tips for formation flying in VTOL VR. Let me know if you think I missed anything in the comments. My flight sim form skills still need lots of work too. So if anyone out there can help do this better, then I'm certainly all ears.